Welcome to Titans, a dialogue between material, space and time at Fondaccio Marcello in Venice. Curated by James Putnam, this exhibition is multidisciplinary artist Wallace Chan's first large-scale titanium sculpture exhibition. I am Shona Data, art historian, curator, writer and broadcaster. I will be your guide for this exhibition. The exhibition is composed of two parts. A dialogue between material and time is a series of freestanding, colossal sculptures juxtaposing titanium and iron. A dialogue between material and space is an immersive installation work created with mirrors and titanium. It invites viewers to be part of the artwork and reflect on the space in non-space. Sculpture 1 shows a goddess-like figure on top and an iron structure below it. The goddess figure reminds us of the Wallace Cut, an illusionary carving technique invented by Chan in 1987. If you walk around the figure, you'd find a total of eight faces, some are reliefs, some in dalio. The titanium is in a cold grey colour, refined, airy and futuristic, while the iron is in a warm reddish tone, hard, heavy, grounded, and ancient. The two materials create a sharp contrast, the head and the body, the spiritual and the physical. The faces coming towards the face in the middle are like wings. They are also like winds. According to Chan, they are the winds of change. The sculpture conveys a moment in time where the self disappears and reappears, a process he experiences when he meditates. The reason why Chan is fascinated by and almost obsessed with titanium is because, in his own words, titanium is close to eternity. He is always looking for ways to transcend time. He is both certain that iron and titanium will outlive him, and when measured against each other, titanium will last longer than iron. He yearns for materials that will continue to embody his ideas in the future when his physical body ceases to exist. Sculpture 10, together with its shadows, resemble a clock, but what time it is depends on where you stand. Time is as subjective as it is objective. It is important to note that titanium is much stronger than iron, so it seems that Chan deliberately displaced the characters of the two materials. He uses iron as the body and titanium as the head, creating the illusion that iron is the source of strength here. Interestingly, in reality, iron oxidates much faster than titanium. Eventually, the iron will erode and disappear, as the titanium remains intact. An incredible, almost unbearable force goes through the titanium head of Sculpture 3. Yet the face, despite being slightly twisted, remains peaceful and calm. Chan conveys his ideal way of existence through this sculpture. Titanium is not a fluid material, even when it reaches its melting point of 1700 degrees Celsius. It is reluctant to move. Chan, however, gives us the illusion that titanium could be twisted like a piece of fabric. Chan was a monk for six months in early 2000. He gave away all his belongings and went on a journey to search for the meaning of life and death. He fasted for weeks, surviving only on water and he meditated. The experience he had during those six months changed the way he sees the world. It also had a lasting impact on his work. Sculpture 2 depicts a meditative face. One self has become more selves. The faces are neither male nor female, neither young nor old. They are meant to be universal, monumental and transcendental. Sculpture 5 is quite complex and features smaller versions of the heads, occasionally framed within a square configuration of iron girders. This creates what is often referred to in art as the Drost effect, which involves placing a copy of an image within itself, thereby suggesting an endlessly recurring sequence. The term originated from a vintage advertising image used by Drost, a popular Dutch chocolate brand, which depicted a nurse presenting a box of cocoa powder with a label showing the same image. 
Chan uses this device with the recursive smaller version of his sculpture, becoming an even smaller version, evoking the notion of infinity and its relationship with space and time. With titanium, Chan represents the moment a drop of water falls to the ground. A metal so stubborn and so hard it is now docile and fluid. Sculpture 13 is different from the rest of the sculpture in the time series. According to curator James Putnam, the head motif is totally contorted into an elongated twisted spiral form, as if finally melting into a globule of molten titanium on the floor. This form suggests a flowing liquid state, which highlights its materiality, while at the same time expressing its transience or, or ephemerality. This creates a play on weight and weightlessness, which evokes a floating and haunting quality, and the strange, compressed perspective causes its appearance to shift as the observer walks around the sculpture. There is tension between the sensuality of its form and the distancing effect of the material. The sculpture conveys a sense of concentration, inviting the viewer's gaze to penetrate their peaceful, idealised, Buddha-like faces with exaggerated ears, features that have origins in the gemstone carvings. Chan uses light and reflection to create a unique spatial effect which viewers can interact with and thus become part of the work. The reflections from the wall works merge with their surroundings and arouse in the spectator an uncanny sense of moving through another dimension. The abstract marks that Chan has inscribed on the extra hard titanium surfaces using diamond tools represent the primordial state of chaos out of which the earliest life forms evolved billions of years ago. The installation also helps evoke the psychological space we inhabit, exploring the illusion of space inside non-space. Although space is absolute and infinite, it is insignificant without material. Each is dependent on the other, material and space being the two most fundamental elements of sculpture. 